coming out of Eastern Oregon, damn near Idaho. Listen to the double talking with Dog Bite Hair Show. Thank you all for tuning in to Double Talking with Dog Bite. On this episode, I got Husky Burnett. We talk about a number of things from his new project, The Slow Attack, to the pandemic, which seems to be a hot topic for my guests. <clears throat> talk about his gear. Talk about a few things. Um, but yeah, first, before we roll into that, here's a song by The Slow Attack. This is called Suicidal Freedom. But first, a word from $2 Elvis. Uh, howdy. My name is $2 Illness. I'm the owner-operator of King of the Road VIP Chauffeur Service. That's the tour guide service where you take a tour and dash with me, the King. Well, look out now, I'm cruising around town. You want to see the city, I'll take you around. Hop on in my baby blue sedan. But don't get jealous of my hundreds of fans. I'll show you the sides and all the bright lights that you see. Hell, take the wheel. Hell, take the wheel. Elvis, two dollar Elvis, take the wheel. All you gotta do, my boy, is go to www.twodollarelvis.com. Select your date, put down that deposit, and you got a date with me, the King. Elvis, two dollar Elvis, take the wheel. folks with me on the zoom i got husky burnett what's up buddy what's happening how you doing doing good man chilling yeah. on the mountain you back out in georgia now is that what i understand or yeah yeah, yeah we're on lookout mountain um we're like 10 minutes from tennessee though if yeah. that where yeah, we're like right over the line cool man um i know you're out here in dirty stuff. Uh? Back in the dirty south. 
Yeah, I knew that you were in um, Colorado for a while, but Colorado can be kind of rough. It's kind of spendy. It can be rough. Uh, the music scene can be – no, the music scene's awesome. The the Sometimes the music scene can be tough. Uh, like, it's great. There's good bands, but there's a lot of festivals that have, like, a Colorado only, like, uh, native Colorado native bands play is that but there's not a lot of like at the time too I was doing like the working musician thing I guess I mean I guess that's what you would call it just you know residency gigs of just playing Wednesdays Thursdays Fridays Saturdays Sundays and trying to do residency gigs and those four hour or three hour gigs that that would come along aren't really there at least where we were at, they weren't. But but the cool shows were there. So give and take. So trying to play, basically trying to, I had to work a job, a real job out there. I had to have a nine to five out there instead of doing the music thing. That was different. But uh, we fucking loved Colorado, dude. Then we went yeah. to California after that. So <laughs> I know you guys went to Cali. Yeah, Cali's tough, even tougher than Colorado, man. Especially right now. We, we dug it. We dug it, man. We we somehow fit right in, man. We uh, the residency gigs, all that stuff, man. Yeah. So, what, well, what took you back to to Georgia? A weird turn of events, kind of, sort of. Like we uh, we had this tour, so we started this band, the Slow Attack. <laughs> Basically, started it out there, or before we left out there, we were kind of like, well, let's go where the drummers at. We had done uh, the year. That year, yeah, that year, uh, was that 2018, babe? Yeah, 2018, we did, we weren't going to do any touring. We did two festivals, one in Colorado, one in California. We got talked into doing the one in California. So we just made it a big camping trip. We used a drummer in Colorado and a different drummer in California. And at the end of it, we were like, same thing that happened with Colorado. We were like, man, you know, this place rules. We could... We could totally live here for a minute and totally do this. So we did and kind of went where the drummer was. And that's when we got the album recorded. And we uh, we got the album recorded. We had to come back here, though, to mix it and master. Well, to mix it and do drums, mix drums. So we planned a tour. We we're calling it Husky and the Slow Attack. We did a tour to Colorado and back once we moved out there the next year. We did... Um, we're going to do a tour out back out here, back out east to mix the album. Mm-hmm. And then by the time we got here, things just kind of happened. And then COVID happened and the tour, the East Coast tour never happened. Like things just didn't happen. The, we got the album mixed and finally got it mastered. And then that didn't happen. And then so we were like, me and Caroline, we're just sitting here like without a drummer and without a band basically again. So we just hung out man <laughs> we just hung out till we till we got the band going basically till things opened up so that's didn't, that's what didn't you buy a house out there too yeah 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 we're uh we bought a house on the mountain almost exactly a year ago on the 18th i think we closed on the february 18th last year right on so we're here to stay and, you know, we like the drummer wasn't super permanent out there. We were using Pine Box Boys drummer. So, like, when we came out here, we were going to do the tour with a different drummer and uh, mix the album and then kind of split time between East Coast and West Coast. And and then, you know, how the rest of the story goes. COVID, <laughs> all that. COVID, that thing. Yeah. How do you guys, how do you guys get, do you get through that? You know, it's usually a question. Yeah. We topic I like to brush on getting through it, like being musicians. Yeah, I mean, you know, just life in general. Yeah, just I mean everything, you know, man, it's tough. Like, I just got over the shit myself. I got it finally, you know. And uh, I personally, I think the variant that I got probably wasn't as tough as the first one, but and I was also yeah. vaccinated, so. Um, and, and the day I got it is the day I got my booster. So it's just, it was weird. It wasn't, I'd definitely been sicker, but it was definitely, I was definitely fucking sick. 
And if uh, it's worse yeah, without we, the booster, I wouldn't like to know what that's like. Yeah, we got, let's see, two weeks ago now or three weeks ago, I got it. Two weeks ago, she got it. We dodged it for two years, man. Really? Yeah. Um, but uh, it's went through our whole band. Like our, our plan was to, sorry, I'm uh, moving you so I can charge my phone. That's all right. Um, yeah, the uh, we got it. It went through our whole band. Our guitarist got it. Then our drummer got it. Then I got it. And then Caroline got it. So like we had these uh, these big plans to take the winner and write new stuff, and then we all <laughs> get sick. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not, but but like going through it, dude. Like we, I don't know. We made the best of it. It was a uh, honestly, it's kind of a love hate thing. Like we, I don't know. We uh thoroughly enjoyed not touring for a minute mm -hmm. but then we were starting to hate like not being able to play at all like touring or not just the fact that we had this band going and now we can't can't play so yeah. like, i'm getting out of shot i'm trying to that's no, all right man um yeah like i always tell people i didn't realize what how much of a people person i was until they took shows away you know yeah dude for real like and now you know i'm like it's still it's still weird it's still weird right now but it's it got better then it got weird again we played a lot um we played a whole lot actually since august yeah how's the how do how are the rules down there in Georgia, man? That's always an interesting topic I like to to cover while I'm interviewing people from all over the state. Like every state seems to be different. Like is Georgia pretty lax on yeah. shit. Georgia, we're not in Georgia that much. We're really in Chattanooga, Tennessee. And okay. But Georgia, Georgia and Tennessee are pretty much on the same level at this point. It's not that strict. Um they're like the one venue we play they do require one of the venues the main venue we've been playing anyway um cherry street tavern they require vaccination card or proof of vaccination um or test on most of the shows there's been a couple that they didn't require it for whatever reason but um yeah like the new variant went through town in the music scene and you know people try to do what they can do but you can't stop it and, no and it's a thing i don't know it's i'm i'm so over it at this point i mean now that i've gotten it and got over it too i'm like ah whatever but it just can't be that way no you know not... in two weeks i could probably, you'd probably be able to get it again and then shows will be down again it's just a weird clusterfuck right now me and john myers or james leg we were talking about it a couple days ago earlier this week like he's got to go to atlanta next week and then go to france or go somewhere um out of the country and do like five dates and it's like you know we're both talking like oh shit like really We've gotta go do this like i hope it's okay like you know but what are you gonna do you gotta pay the bills you know mm -hmm. so yeah i'm also you know and i don't know i'm definitely not a fucking scientist and I definitely don't want to get the reputation of Joe Rogan on here, but part of me thinks that maybe everybody getting it's probably might be a good thing in the long run, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Like, like that's how we are right now. We're kind of like, okay, all four of us got it. All four of us are over it. I'm still trying to plug in my phone, dude. All <laughs> four of us got it. All four of us are over it. Can we please just like move on now? Is it like really over yet, or is it? Yeah, I mean, I feel like it's getting close. Even with the last big rush through, you know, I feel, I feel like it's getting close. And you know, the first time, I mean, I'm not claiming to be a psychic or anything, but the first time they let everything go back up, I'm like, this is gonna fucking, this is bullshit. Like, uh, it's, it's gonna fucking shut down again. I mean, I hope so, man. I mean, it, it's getting to a point where it's like. Okay, we've played it safe for two fucking years now. Like, 
and kind of, you know, I mean, we probably, we could have handled this better on so many different levels, you know, so many yeah. different levels. I mean, um, and it became politicized. It, it was all a bunch of bullshit really, you know, yeah. and I, and not, not, yeah. not, I'm not saying the COVID's bullshit, you know, just how people in general handled it on both ends, you know, especially when it started getting politicized, you know, like, yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, it's it's like i said i don't know anything else to say about it at this point other than it's just it's just been a clusterfuck like yeah that's the best uh, way to put I'm it ready, man really, really. Ready for it to be over. yeah i'm ready for it to be over i think um but yeah like i was gonna say i mean we played it safe like what i mean i don't know what else we can do man it's time the fucking yeah. letter rip in my opinion you know yeah yeah just um, get back at what like, i don't know man every you know you think it's cool and then something else happens. Somebody else, you know, gets it. Somebody in another, like Hoot and Hollers just heard the, it's, the whole band's got it. Tours canceled or the Florida dates are canceled or whatever. The rest of the tours canceled. Like it's every week there's somebody else, you know, that's got it or has to stop their shows or their tours or whatever, you know. So, yeah, I know, then, man, I'm just like, I've known a few people that died too, too you know, know man. I have yeah. known, known a couple of people that have passed on from it, you know. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not, not cool. Nope. So, um, not cool. So, how did your new band come about? The Slow Attack. I've been playing you guys on Dog Water and on the podcast for a minute. Uh, awesome. Thanks. Yeah. yeah, man, I dig it a lot. So, uh, but you've kind of went through some lineup changes and it's kind of been a revolving door. You feel like you, you tell me now you finally think you got it set, dialed in, huh? Oh yeah. It's for sure dialed in. Uh, so it started, I, I'm a metal kid, you know, I grew up a metal kid. Um, Slayer, you know, it went from guns and roses and rock and roll earlier rock and roll to Guns N' Roses to Metallica. It just got heavier and heavier and I was all of a sudden a metal kid, you know, and I, but I always loved blues too and I always did that in my bedroom and then I got out doing it and I did it for so long that I really missed the rock and roll. Just not exactly metal, just getting heavy, heavier like it. I was trying to do blues on 11 anyway and just needed, I don't know, man, just a, one of those things like it had not necessarily run its course. Like it's just over and I'm not doing any Husky blues band gigs anymore or something. It's just, I needed to get the rock and roll out, I guess. Yeah. And, uh, we, we recorded three songs for this split that kind of never happened. But when we did that, it was with this, uh, it was supposed to be with this heavier band kind of motorhead, on speed kind of band and we were like all right now's our chance we can kind of heavy these songs up but it was still just the husky burnett lineup so we made it to california we got out there and jack gibson from exodus who's kind of in the our little circle of friends like the pine box boys and yeah i know jack um, jack's cool dude man yeah, yeah man so we were talking to, to Slade or Palm Box Boys, Lester, maybe. We're talking about Jack doing the, the album, and I knew he'd, he had done the Gallows album. So I was like, well, shit, I'll hit him up. See, you know, that'd be cool, because especially if we wanted to do something a little, a little more rock and roll than the Husky stuff. Mm -hmm. So we get out. We moved out there in December. We get out there, and he's like, hey, yo, I'm coming out to do the Palm Box record in February, the first week. We should do yours the second week of February. And we're like, oh, shit, really? He's like, yeah, February's, that's the time. And we were like, oh, shit, we don't have a full record, you know? So we just <laughs> busted out. We just fucking, <laughs> we took, we recorded a couple of Husky songs and just made them, like, fucking fast and different. Um, put this album together cut a few of them off and, and that's what we're left with. So that's kind of how it started. We just knew we wanted to do some heavier stuff. We, know, we knew we wanted to do it with Slade. We were in California with Slade on drums and then uh, with Jack behind the, the controls. And so we just fucking did it, man. And then 
like I said, though, all this shit happened and now it's finally where it's at. Cause we're back here. We bought a house here. We're staying here. Uh, we had Slade and then we had a touring drummer, my Boggs. He did the, uh, the one two. We did that as Husky and the slow attack to like, cause we kind of popped it up on people. And so we, just so they would know who the hell it was. It was Husky and the slow attack. But then we got here, got home and we found these two kick-ass mofos. We got our buddy Charlie Shelton on guitar and uh, uh, Eric Cole on drums. And they're both like old school Chattanooga local scene musicians. They're both killer. They've both been in some killer projects, the morons back in the day and somnambulist. Charlie was in crazy prog rock band. Like, so we've got the we've got the thing, man. We've got the all the all the ingredients are there, and it's good and it's tight, and we're all happy. So we're we're here, man. Right on. Yeah, you said that you're gonna be uh, recording another album here pretty quick, right? Not pretty quick, but we want to do it. We want to get it done this year because the album that we just put out, we didn't like super duper put it out. Mm-hmm. Um, big push or release or anything because it had been like we're going on like this month will be three years since we recorded that album with that music yeah yeah you yeah. know so it's changed like uh the style hasn't so much changed is just we've finally figured out where after three years <laughs> what we want to do how we want to do it and now we have a second guitar and a different drummer and it's just there we we've We've already started writing songs, so hopefully we'll get in the studio this year. We're going to do it. Um, we plan on doing it with Jack again, and um, which the, we'll probably do it here in Tennessee somewhere, chatting the mix of Chattanooga and Nashville. But, yeah, we're working on it. Nothing like – there's no, like, label pushing us to do nothing. We're not pushing ourselves to do anything. We're just – We started this band and the shit went down. Then we finally got the band back together now that we got here. And we're just happy to be playing. Man. But we do. We definitely want to record. Like, if I could go back and put. We released that killer, but that's a lot of work. So we're just. And sometime this year. Hold on, I'm having some difficulties here. Hopefully I didn't lose you. But yeah, go um but yeah, we just we're just happy to be playing again. Like we the band is definitely solidified with these two guys, Charlie and Eric, and it's just we love each other, we're happy playing. Like I haven't been this happy playing and years dude like some years you think some you're gonna years. are you so, working yeah, on any solo fun. stuff not yet i mean sort of yeah not with the full band not with the three piece but yeah i'm uh basically like when slow attack stuff when we're playing or riding that's we're together or charlie's over here or me and carolina are in the room but when i'm in here by myself in the jam room studio we i'm just finding blues tones and because I'm I got like that's what another thing we did during the pandemic we uh we hold up we got home studio stuff um a bunch of gear we got things that we really wanted and and needed and uh so man I've just been sitting here coming up with blues tones and songs and riffs that I know I'll make into songs one day. I just got to get the time and separate the slow attack stuff. Once that's, that's kind of the focus right now. So once, once that takes a break or something, I can still do the Husky stuff on the side. Cause now I, I really want to do it again because it's been so long. So yeah. I've been doing, I've been doing uh, like these duo gigs, it's basically just my old songs, same stuff with uh, my old drummer Yachty Westfield on uh, kick drum and hi-hat and lead guitar. Uh, we call ourselves the Barrel House Jukes, but it's just my old songs. Yachty might sing a couple. And uh, so I get to get the blues out that way. 
did a couple solo shows here and there, kick drum and or suitcase uh, kick drum and small amp. So that was fun. Got to do that. But yeah, man, well, I'm working on songs. I've got a couple that I just keep playing over and over and over. So I know that when when we do jam uh, the blue stuff, I definitely got to get those shows going again because I'm starting to really miss it. Yeah. So do you have a whole band for that? Because, yeah, you do. That's right. You played Ruckus. Um, is that kind of... Yeah, three-piece. Yep, three-piece? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the two-man band stuff, that's fun, too, though, with Yachty. That's real super fun because we don't rehearse. We don't do <laughs> any. We show up and we jam, man, and it's fucking fun, dude. So, But, yeah, the three-piece, man, I like... I got some new guitars now, new amps, and just went down that rabbit hole. And so when the Husky stuff, I keep telling Caroline, I'm like, I don't know when it's going to happen, but when it happens, it's going to be fucking fun for me because I always, you know, I got a new Strat and a new, got my Fender amp fixed. I got a Marshall stack. Like, I'm, I want to play some blues rock at some point. So when it happens, it's going to be a fucking blast. Nice. What other guitars do you get? Oh, what did I not get? I don't know. I got <laughs> gifted. Oh, man. So I don't know if you know Billy Mungus. You know Billy Mungus? That name sounds familiar, you know, but I don't Mike think so. Fiedler. Huh? We met him through Mike Fiedler. We met him through Mike Fiedler and that whole, he's from Philly. Um, Man, we when we were touring hardcore, like Philly was a central working point. It was like second home for a while. So we met Mungus up there. Uh, through our Philly folks. Uh, Mungus had these guitars, man. He gifted me this Gibson Firebird studio. Oh, wow. It's amazing. It's amazing. I played it on a, a few of the, the duo, two-man band things with Yachty's Barrel House Jukes gigs. And it's a beast. That and my 65 Fender amp, that's, uh, that's, that's the blues rig right there. And the Strat. I bought a... Um, I bought a, a fake Ibanez Iceman. It's a copy huh. from uh, Whistle Teagues. You know that dude, Zach, uh, Zach Rose, Whistle Teagues cigar box builder guy. Anyway, uh, that dude, uh, he had an Iceman, and I bought it off him for cheap. And uh, I, don't, I don't, I won't ever be in another metal like thrash metal, death metal band. But when I want to play some thrash metal and death metal, I grab that fucking guitar. Cause it's super mean, yeah. Uh, but I don't know. I've got. I, I'm, I'm not gonna go through a list because we've you got a shit ton bought and sold so many guitars in the past year. Yeah. <laughs> well, I've been thinning the herd. I'm down to like I'm down to like five. Like every one of everything that I need, like truly need for like recording and whatever blues gigs and slow attack gigs and so yeah, we whittled it down. But we, we <laughs> yeah. We've got we've got one of everything. I got a Strat, I got a Telly, got a Les Paul, got a SG, got an Iceman for the metal shit that I'll never play, and got the Firebird. We're all right. <laughs> amps and pedals. That's 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 the addiction out there is amps and pedals. Amps and pedals. Yeah. Yeah. Not the not the guitars, man. It's the amps and pedals. I geek out on that, dude. <laughs> Hardcore geek out. On that. You know, some yeah. when I was in my teens, well, we that, that's my excuse too. We got a home studio, so that's my excuse. We got to get all this stuff. You know, we may yeah. need it for recording. We may need it for recording. We may yeah. need it. When I was yeah. uh, when I was a teenager, I used to be a real gearhead when it came to music, but I kind of lost that art and just have been acoustic. So, you know, it's one of those things where, like, if you don't stay with it, you kind of lose you know what's going on so i don't really pay all that much attention to the gear anymore because i just pay attention to you know, what i need which isn't much you know so but i've I've been wanting to get back into playing electric again so i'm trying to like get back into gear again and learn how to learn what would suit me and stuff you know yeah yeah that's uh that's that happened to me like i started touring nonstop and just lost touch with gear like i i knew what was cheap and wouldn't break down on me which was a 
212 combo of fender front man solid states not a tube amp doesn't sound that great but i was doing i didn't have a bass player back then the um husky stuff was just me and a drummer mm -hmm. so if it sounded ratty and nasty and dirty it was good it was raw and nasty and good you know mm -hmm. so i didn't even i lost touch with all the that shit but then then I got in, I got curious about fuzz pedals and that just started the whole thing over again. Like the, it, the whole amp thing over again and then the whole pedal thing over again. So yeah, we went down the rabbit hole big time huh. on the pandemic and just, just not touring, man. I had time to do that. You know, I had time to like do all of the other stuff that you don't like that I wasn't able to do because I was touring 24 seven, you know, I was playing for a living, like, yeah, didn't get to do a lot of things. So. Yeah. That makes sense, man. Like once you get stuck home, you start fucking just getting bored and figuring shit out that you haven't been, had time to do, you know? Yeah, Totally. Did you get stuck having oh, yeah, to get no. a real job when when uh, the pandemic hit? Yeah, I didn't have to. Uh, luckily, I got my unemployment um, from California. And um, because we were basically, well, we were basically going to not stay here. We weren't going to stay out east. We were going to come back to our mix and go back out there. So. But yeah, um, I got unemployment from that, and then uh, I usually usually go out to California and work every year anyway, and so it all worked out to where I could stay home. Got my unemployment for all the gigs because we every gig we did out there, I was doing residency. I had what two residency gigs every week, like uh, to where I had five bars or six bars venues in rotation. So I would play twice a week out there and it was easy greasy. So got a um, lot of contracts, W9s and tax forms and with all that stuff. So I was able to get my unemployment for the gig worker. I had not been pandemic though, the pandemic unemployment to be able to get the gig worker unemployment. I wouldn't have been able to do yeah. that. Yeah. And you got to be pretty that was a huge help. You got to be pretty legit to get it too, don't you? Like a lot of our homies probably don't fucking yeah. claim that shit. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I, I had all my paperwork, you know, everything from all the all the residency gigs, dude, and that panned out. I did not expect that to happen either. Like that was that was out of left field. I was looking for Plan B. Yeah, I think a lot of people really fucking were happy that they uh, decided to to go the on paper route, you know, cause, uh, it did yeah. save a lot of people's asses, man. Like I know Honeycut was sitting pretty good because of it, you know? So I'm happy they did that for you guys, man. Yeah, it was a real blessing. Like I said, I would definitely wasn't expecting that. Like, you know, me and Jack from Exodus, uh, we're talking about that and it, you know, he, I would expect him to get it and me not to get it. <clears throat> but we both got it. Um, that was, I was pretty, that was pretty amazing. I, I did not expect that, but yeah. you know, it ain't like I got fucking rich or nothing, but we were able to pay, able to pay the bills. And plus we, like I had worked, uh, I was basically doing all the residency gigs and working um, on a farm in California. So I saved up quite a bit of money from the farm and uh from all the farm work we were caretakers on this farm so we handled chickens and vegetables the garden everything it was great so we were able to save a bunch of money from that so that that helped us helped us out quite a bit but i don't know dude like i'm uh I'm ready to get back playing a lot yeah you said you so got some gigs hard. coming up <laughs> Yeah, yeah. We were uh we took the the winter off to just kind of chill. We were supposed to work on stuff, but we all got sick. <laughs> um but yeah, we got uh we got some Chattanooga shows coming up. Then we're doing Goat Fest in Mississippi in May. 
uh, 27th and 28th. Um, Todd Laney, shout out to Todd Laney. That's a killer. It's like heavy blues, the other side of blues or something. Uh, the more rock and roll in your fucking face. I think Hoot and Hollers, are they on it? Yeah. Yeah, Hoot and Hollers are on it. Cool, man. Well, that'd be good. Yeah, yeah. You guys oh, book anything for summer yet? Yeah. No, because everything's, you know, we thought this was going to be the year and everything's still kind of eh. So we don't really know what we're doing yet. It may be another year that's just like last year, which was us playing late summer to or summer to to fall through fall and then chilling for the winter again. I don't know. But we're looking to get down to Atlanta and a couple other spots. But we, we've got a couple things booked, but we're that's kind of we're in talks right now, like trying to figure out. We're doing uh, we're doing a gig in February at the end of this month. Here we're doing uh, we got like one gig a month. I think it's right now, so we're trying to fill up May and figure out June and July. But who knows, man? I don't yeah. think any big tours are gonna freaking happen. So, well, right now, man, the problem that I'm seeing is the the bands. The tours that are happening are fucking, uh, I mean, I guess the market's over flooded is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. You know, there's so many people out there right now doing it. Yeah. And the festivals are booking like that, man. Like everything's mm -hmm. just booked because everybody's yeah. been hungry. Just wait. Yeah, I know. I know. I just hope, like, and that's cool. Like if we don't get to play a shit ton this year, that's fine. I just hope that everybody that is getting to play and everything that is, but doesn't get shut down again. And oh, we don't know. Like, I mean, any band, dude, you lose two shows on a run. You're, you're going in the red, man. And, it, yep. you know, I don't, I don't know. Not that it's, you know, not that it's all about the money because we're getting rich doing this shit. It's just, I mean, you know, you go in the red, you go in the red and that fucks the whole fucking plan up and yeah fucks morale up fucks attitudes up fucks yeah. fucks everything up you know yeah man emotionally it's draining i mean it's just even thinking about it right now it's kind of draining you know what I mean? like, <laughs> that's why i'm like i'm cool with not thinking about it and not planning too much too soon and not having so many expectations that's what's cool about this band and that's what's cool about right now i guess is because we're not like, I mean, you know, we're all settled here right now. We're not like, I'm not busting the road like I was 24 seven, having to do Mondays at the fucking car wash and Tuesdays at the bowling <laughs> alley just to make gas money to get to Thursday, Friday, Saturday. But like, you know, we get to chill and just kind of go with the flow. That's all we can do right now. Yeah. Everything's just up in the air. It's going to be up in the air. Yeah, yeah we're, it, that, that's the difference too like it, the fun got out of it when i had to play so much when i was making my money playing guitar at that level it's like we can only do it for so long before it's just not as fun anymore i mean yeah. everything has its time and everything runs its course so 100 percent, man you know. well, even just touring from your own music and doing that man it gets fucking old sometimes you know yeah yeah, yeah. yeah you just need to change if if a, if a musician doesn't progress and change in some way whether it changes or whether it stays the same uh, you're you're not fulfilling what you need to fulfill in yourself so you gotta keep it fresh do whatever you whether it's keep it fresh or keep it the same whatever but you gotta do what feels good and what feels right musically you have to that's the it's got to be fulfilling it's yeah. got to be worth it you gotta want to do it have yeah. fun doing it that's why we all do about. it that's that's all we're yeah man that's that's where we're at too right now like i'm glad i don't have to depend on it to pay the bills right now and have to do commit to 30 60 day runs and maybe i'm <laughs> I'm not that old. Maybe I just feel old, but uh, it's nice to just feel and not have to worry about that. Yeah, man. Fucking around anymore. I'll tell you, it gets harder on your body, man. I haven't done any like uh, 
you know, I haven't done any good two month long runs and well, probably about a decade at least, you know, but, uh, yeah. but the fucking every once in a while, when I get a wild hair up my ass, I decided to do a week or two, man, fuck. I'm wrecked when I get home, dude, my body is just fucking wrecked. I can't do it. Like I used to. Yeah. I mean, we drove, we drove like our our route started like um the drive from city to city started getting shorter like um uh, <laughs> seven hours seven hours between cities was fine six hours was fine then f- about four hours was pretty good you know five. yeah dude. and then if we can push it to six or seven we will but we're not going to push ourselves to push it to six or seven. So it started getting smaller, smaller. So back in, um, let's see, back in November, we, we went, we did some, we did a, we've done Raleigh. We've done a few shows. So we went to, we went to our Wake Forest. We went to Wake Forest, North Carolina. We went to the Rusty Knuckles compound. We played a show. Dude, let me tell you that drive from just Chattanooga to Wake Forest felt like I'd been out for at least 15 days yeah like just just here to there we were like holy shit what the fuck <laughs> like yeah. did, was i am i out of shape like i've lost weight since i was touring but man like i feel i'll be 45 in may i feel every bit of 60 or <laughs> 65 <laughs> well you, you look like you've lost some weight though man like from when i first met you didn't you? you, you uh, I gained some back though when we moved. I think back we all easy. did, brother. I we it. all did on the pandemic. Yeah, right. I I lost like a hundred pounds uh, and the yo-yoing and shit though with the pandemic. Yeah, I lost thirty-five pounds when we moved to California. Um, I started eating better, and when I was like I said, we were living on that farm or homestead, and. I was running the mill, running up to, you know, chopping wood, all that shit, and tending garden, chopping trees down, cutting slabs, just all that shit, like farm fit, which, but, you know, I don't fucking work out, I don't exercise, so that the mill's like 200 feet from the cabin, but still I got to fucking walk around the property all day, I got to do all this shit, and then eating better, doing this kind of loose, like, keto-ish thing, I get got down to like what I don't know what I was down to, but I lost like 35 to 37 pounds. But then we got back here and I ate some biscuits and gravy and then I ate some <laughs> McDonald's on the way on the way moving back. Like we had to get fast food so we could just keep trucking, you know, it's fucking three day drive. So we were eating fast food and hurrying up and driving. Yeah, I gained some of that shit back, a lot of it back, but. I'm at least still a little lighter than I was. I'm yeah, probably you- never losing the belly. <laughs> yeah. Did you quit drinking or anything on top of that? Uh, I wouldn't say I quit drinking, but I wouldn't really say I was a drinker to begin with. I was going to say, I didn't, I'm not just, sure. Yeah. I've had my nights, dude, you know, on the road where it's like, you know, your buddies are in town. Y'all are playing the same show or whatever. Festivals get fucking hammered. Yeah. But I'm not like a drink at the house kind of guy. Yeah. Every now and again, like I'll pour like maybe a shot or two in a fucking coffee mug and like take forever to sip that thing. Like tequila and Sprite or some shit. Yeah. Or some cranium or something i don't know i'm not really a drinker i don't ever buy 12 packs i bought a 12 pack when we bought this place thinking you know we're gonna have some beers with the neighbors they're always drinking beer when they come up cool i'll buy a 12 pack that motherfucker lasted for like three months or something <laughs> like it took forever to drink <laughs> like i don't i just don't do it i smoke yeah. all day every day but i don't drink yeah that's kind of i am i don't i don't i don't really smoke all that much either it started making me paranoid after a while but um but yeah i i don't drink all that much anymore i, I like to have some around i'm with you I, I got a bottle of cabo on my fridge that i take a shot of every once in a while sometimes it's like a moscow mule or something just a nice mix of vodka drink but not everyday drinker you know yeah i don't drink in public all that much either i drink more at home like a weirdo i guess you yeah. know because uh 
usually I have to fucking drive, man. And my job is like fucking, if I get a Dewey, I'm done, you know? So I'm, I, I don't drive if I've got a drop yeah. usually, you know? Especially yeah, the cops around here would love to fuck. Yeah, right. Yeah, I've just never been, I mean, don't get me wrong. I, when I drink, I guess I drink to get drunk probably because it's like <laughs> the time to do it. Like it's party time. Like like we never went to Philly to play and stay three days to and not get drunk. Like it's just some situations are just the party time and the right time. I usually these days I'll tell you what though, the older I get, I want to have a shot before I go on stage. And it's not like I'm super nervous or anything, but I like now that I feel older or something, like I gotta have a fucking shot before I go on to like loosen up. Like some yeah. I don't know. Like some old man in a cover band says, you don't have a <laughs> shot of whiskey to loosen up. Like <laughs> Fucking <laughs> hey, yeah. I hear you, man. That's a thing usually. But then, like our, uh, let's see, our Eric doesn't drink either, right? Maybe he'll have a drink. Our guitarist doesn't drink. Uh, Caroline doesn't drink. Stomach problems and stuff, so she doesn't drink. I'm I rarely drink. I'll have a drink if we're playing, but well, that's about it. I'll have a couple beers, maybe a shot. Well, you have seizures and shit too, I don't you? Really huh? You have seizures and shit too, don't you? I uh, used to, man. I'm pretty much done with that. Good, man. That's like, good. Um, you scared the shit out yeah. of us, the Ruckus, that one year. Yeah, that was crazy. Like, there's a couple of times, like, there's a couple of stories that, like, Caroline tells, and that's one of those. Like, Hammerlock, I was supposed to sit in with Hammerlock and do Sweet Senorita. I'm Fucking love that song. That's like my favorite Hammerlock song. And then, you know, I'm fucking seizing out on the hill over there or some shit. And they're like, Husky Burnett, come on up. Uh, Husky Burnett. Like, fuck, man. There's been some weird ones, dude. Like, that's oh, fuck. That's how I met J.D. Wilkes. Like, I'm pretty oh, really? sure that's why he remembered who the fuck I was the next time he talked or to me or saw me or whatever. Because we were we were opening up. For them, um, Nashville or Atlanta, I don't remember. And we uh, we were opening up. I did a couple songs in, and boom, had a fucking seizure like mid song, dude. Well, and, we were uh, playing, huh? Yeah, man. And so, I mean, like, I don't know. It was one of those times where, like, it wasn't that bad, and like. Like, cause I'm like, I don't know. It's weird, man. You go out of it. And like, if I'm at a show or something, I'm like, fuck no, I got to finish the show. I got to finish the show. Like you're, you know, I'm like fucking in this zone thing. I don't know. It's like, I've got to finish what I was doing or something. I don't know. So anyway, I go back up there after like 10 minutes of just sitting down, drinking some water and go back up there and finish the fucking gig. And, uh, JD was tri- kind of tripping on that. Like, whoa, dude, <laughs> Like, I just took a break for a second, had a seizure, got back up there, and, like, the lyrics were wrong and shit and things like that. Like, I'm sure, but they were, like, my own songs. Like, who the fuck knows those songs anyway? So, like, we were able to finish the 45 minutes, (laughs) shit like that. Like, we were doing this huge fucking blues festival in Jersey. I don't miss those days. Okay, so we were playing this huge fucking festival in Jersey, blues thing, right on the fucking water. Like, it was fucking fabulous. Was it, like... 10 minutes for him, 15 minutes for him, supposed to hit the stage, boom, have a seizure. Like, they were supposed to make the, the band, like they worked it out to where the band that was before us would play like extra songs to give me a minute to kind of like fucking come to and work it out, uh, shake it off or whatever. Like that band was like, didn't get the memo. They were like, all right, we're done. Husky Burnett. And we were like, oh, fuck, dude. Like, yeah, she she said I only forgot a few words on that. <clears throat> excuse me, on that gig. Did you ever figure out what happened? Like what was causing them? No, man. They uh, like when I was twelve, they tried running tests for like forty eight hours to like figure out why I had seizures. I had my first one when I was twelve, and so uh, they couldn't figure out why. It's just one of those things. There's a lot of people out there like that, though. Oh, yeah, man. My little cousin was having them. They kind of just don't fucking know why. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a lot of people. I started noticing things. 
Yeah. And, you know, I started noticing things that like getting worked up, like there was a, there was a period like in, I think in, when we were in Colorado, maybe where I stayed away from, I had to stay away from coffee and like, cause like just getting worked up, not like getting mad or getting upset or like it could be the happiest freaking thing going on. And I'm just excited about it. Something about that could, tr- could trigger me into a seizure, uh, being late on my medicine or something like that. But the medicine wasn't working anymore. So long story short, I got on the right medicine I needed to freaking be on. And um, fucking like three or four years now. Four years in June. It'll be four years. Yeah. I don't, I don't even think about them anymore. I don't. I'm good. Then that's so that was kind of the point. Going to Colorado was a big thing, like us getting healthy, using cannabis in a legal state, and you know, finding better ways. Because, like, um, basically, why I didn't have this newer medication was because I didn't have a neurologist, um, no insurance, just being a musician on the road. So, my neurologist had passed away, and somehow my medical records are nowhere to be found so uh without insurance um and being able to pay for all these tests the the one guy i saw at the hospital here was like yeah i can just put you on the map all right all right can you hear me Says you're muted. Yeah. All right. Now I got it. Okay. So, um, but yeah, you were talking about how your neurologist had passed away and they lost all your records. Yeah. So I just thought I couldn't, cause I couldn't afford those tests to get that medication. But then, um, then a doctor, I saw a nurse practitioner and he's like, Hey, try this stuff. It's like, what? I don't need to like get a referral and go to all this trouble to see a neurologist. He's like, no, Take this, you'll be better. And um, almost four years later, I'm definitely better. Cool, it's man. like cured or something. Like I don't even, yeah, it's crazy. I mean, I'm sure if I quit taking the medication, I would probably get sick again. But dude, that's a like, long I don't... stretch, man, to just not have any relief from having them too, man. So like, it's good that you finally sure have. Is. Like they were controlled pretty good for a while, but then the more and more that I went with that old medication more time that passed it just got worse yeah 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 that was a that was a fucking headache a bunch of times man trying to fucking literally probably i saw you you're sick man you you did not look well when i paid you out that night yeah not cool yeah no so no plans on hitting the hitting the road anytime soon huh not like not major touring like we're like we're looking to do some regional stuff though pretty soon with slow attack um like i said atlanta south carolina north carolina kind of thing some nashville knoxville we were talking about doing a show jack was wanting to do a show with his side band uh coffin hunter maybe do like nashville and uh chattanooga so yeah we're definitely going to play some this year but it's we're gonna play as much as we can, but it's still in the works. Goes, man, yeah, we just don't know what all we can do, you know, yeah. or what all we're gonna be able to do. Yeah, it'd be a so, bitch to book like a we'll super tour and have it get canceled. Yeah, man, like any any kind of run, man, short or long, you get two days that are just like, hey, this isn't happening, or or you know, maybe people aren't canceling shows anymore because of covid rates or whatever but like or covid cases but what if the band gets sick you know what i mean there's just all these variables that just suck right now but for touring and for our situation it sucks for sure but we can still play local we can still keep it you know to a minimum and still play as as much as we can as much as we want to 
Yeah. Just a distance minimal. Keep it around here. Sure. I don't know if that what I don't even know if that fucking matters. Like, <laughs> but that's what we're that's where we're at. <laughs> right on. So yeah, I interviewed uh I interviewed your buddy G. A. Brown the other day. How'd you come about meeting him? Oh, I listened to his old band Hell Stomper. Yeah. Back in the day, Georgia dudes. The um the drummer, one of the drummers in my very first band, the second drummer, Matt Reynolds, he ended up playing with Hell Stomper. So um I started hanging out with those dudes and just got to know Gary that way. I actually was in a band with those guys after Hell Stomper. And then um I started doing my solo thing. Gary started playing drums for me in the early days. And then um, he went on to play with Gary after me. Like we just know all the same people. We started playing in all the same places around here. Um, and then we ended up doing a record a compilation with Tom Hughes, who actually took my place in the Polecat Boogie Revival Band which was the guys from Hell Stomper, the band after Hell Stomper. So, like, there's just this circle of musicians around here. And yeah. And that, me, and, me and him happen to be in the same little circle. Cool. He's a good dude. I always need him for my speaker cabinet fixes and <laughs> wiring up shit. Yeah, speaking of gearhead. And our whole fucking... Yeah. That dude's that dude's going down the rabbit hole too. He's got all these guitars now. Uh -huh. He's got like he he bought the two guitars that when I'm thinning the herd, he bought two of them. <laughs> he's gone guitar crazy. Ah, uh, yeah. I'm trying to tell get him talked into getting a fucking four twelve at least a half stack going. That dude's got little two little bitty amps over there. I'm like, man, you got to play some rock and roll again. Get a fucking big ass amp over there. Yeah. Well, shit, yeah, a killer room for it too. Yeah, that's it. Looks nice. Yeah, man. I keep having technical difficulties over here, man. So I'm gonna cut it short a little bit. I'm sorry, man. I don't know what the fuck's going on All with my good, internet. Man. It's usually solid. We had a pretty it's good solid. interview, though. Yeah, man. It's all good. Is there anything you want to add before we hop off here, where people can get your merch, shit like that? Yeah, go to Bandcamp. It's uh, the theslowattack.bandcamp.com. I think that's how that goes. Yeah, does, does Slow Attack. Does Burnett Slow have one? Oh, uh, no, I don't think so. I don't think it's going anymore. Oh, um, okay. No. But there's plenty of Husky shit on YouTube and Spotify and all that digital platform. All right. Shit. No, no t-shirt. Yeah, the, huh? the new album. The new album is up on Bandcamp and it's up on uh, Rock Freaks. Uh, posted it on YouTube. So look up the Slow Attack Power Volume Lust is the album. And we've right. got a three song EP that we did for fucking ever ago. That's up on the Bandcamp. And then we got t shirts and rolling papers and uh, stickers and other shit up there for sale. Go follow us on Instagram and all that shiz. Good man. All right, That's buddy. Attack band. I'll post cool, links man. in the comments or in the in the description too for everybody. I appreciate you coming on, buddy. Sorry about the technical difficulties. It's just how it goes sometimes. All good, brother. All right. Thanks I'll talk to you later, buddy. Me. You bet. All right, later, man. Bye. Thank you, everyone, for tuning into this week's episode of Double Talking with Dog Bite. I apologize for the technical difficulties. I was having some internet troubles there. Um, but overall, I think that was a good interview with Mr. Husky Burnett. Um, we will have him back on soon, and hopefully we will not have so many technical difficulties. And uh, So anyways, we're going to send you off with another Slow Attack song. Um, this song is called Sweet Desire. Um, so also be sure to tune in next week to uh, double talk and when I have Jared McGovern from Urban Pioneers on he's going to talk to us about all kinds of shit uh, always a great time to talk to Jared one of my favorite guests so be sure to tune into that um, also uh, 
Big thanks to $2 Elvis. If you would like to be featured as a sponsor, hit me up. I'm always down to help out friends and family and anybody who will pay me, really. And um, But yeah, and real quick, uh, please be sure to like Husky Burnett and the, and, uh, the Slow Attacks uh, social media. Uh, those are two separate entities, by the way. Um, so go like those social media pages, Instagram, all that good shit. And go like mine while you're at it, too. I have like 100. Um, you can go like the Dog by Harris page. You can go like the uh, Dog by Harris podcast network page. So you can find all my podcasts, such as Dog uh, Water Radio, um, the Useless and Alone podcast, um, Matt Mark's podcast, which is going to be making an epic return here very shortly. And then, um, but yeah. And then this one here, double talking. So thank you very much for tuning in. This is, um, whatever the fuck I said it was earlier. Peace. Peace.